Hello and welcome to HPA Global Insights, where we'll be interviewing experts from the dietary supplement, nutritional ingredient, and overall natural health food industry. Please like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell, and comment below. Now on with the show. Okay, welcome to the show. Um, this is the second part to a three-part series. So if you missed the first part, make sure you go back and find it. That's where we kind of talk about the market of the GCC in the Middle East. Um, here with my good friend uh, Deepak Joswal. So now today we're going to jump in and talk more about the regulatory requirements if a company is interested in jumping in this market for dietary supplements in the GCC region. Um, so first question most people are going to have right off the bat is going to be, you know, how long does it take? You know, is there a registration process? First of all, what does that look like? How long mm -hmm. does it take per SKU or per product? And then, you know, obviously what is that dollar amount? You know, what, what do I have to pay to get that through? So I'll, I'll let you run with that right uh, there. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, uh, you know, all the GCC countries, the six countries, they have different set of requirements. Um, but uh, the requirements are very much similar. Um, it's not, you know, so something which is different. So um, generally it takes like uh, a simple registration may take like two months. Um, and uh, maybe, you know, a federal registration may take like, you know, six to one year. Uh, that, is a, that is a period uh, for the registration. In terms of cost, uh, you can say that uh, a simpler registration may take a product registration uh, close to like uh, hundred dollars or so uh, per SQ per product you can say and uh, um, that's actually the you know simpler way I can say um, and in terms of uh, if you say uh, requirements um, you can say that um, there are two kinds of registration one is the um, federal registration which happens in each of these countries um, and which is happens into two stages uh, one is the company registration. Company registration is the manufacturing site has been registered at the federal level. Uh, the documentation is like, you know, very simple documentation. Most of the uh, manufacturers and companies, they do have those documents. Some of them are in-house documents. Um, some of the documents which they have to get. So if you say like, you know, five or six major documents required is uh, one is the application form which the manufacturer has to fill. Uh, sign and stamp by them. Then they have to give a letter of uh, distribution agreement to the local distributor because the local company only can register the you know company over there at the federal level. Uh, then the manufacturing license, uh, GMP certificate, um, the site master file, and the list of products which the manufacturer is uh, manufacturing. Okay. Uh, and a brief company profile. That's it. These are the basic requirements for a manufacturer registration. Um, some cases, some uh, regulatory bodies, they may ask some of the documents to be, you know, legalized and uh, attested by the uh, local chamber of commerce in US or the embassy. Uh, that has to be done. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are not very complicated documentation requirements. Um, okay. Then the once the back. manufacturer is well, let's, yeah, just have a, let's just go back a little bit. I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned simple registration or a little bit more, I guess, difficult. So simple, what do you mean by that? Is it something like, like just vitamin C, like a one ingredient product? Is that what you mean by simple? Yeah. So uh, what happens in, in UAE, which is United Arab Emirates, you have two kinds of uh, registration. One is the Dubai municipality registration, uh, which, which takes around a couple of months or so. Um, and uh, this is again depending on the ingredient concentration. So suppose if uh, uh, vitamin C 1,500 milligram is there, uh, it can be registered over there. But if it if if it goes more than that or so, we have to register it at the federal level, which is called uh, you know um, Ministry of Health. Uh, so we have to register over there. So that takes six to maybe one year also registration period. Uh, for Dubai municipality, which is again a couple of months registration, you just need uh, uh, pre-sale certificate, certificate of analysis, certificate of composition, uh, GMP certificate, uh, label of the product, and sample. 
So these are five, six simple requirements, which most of the companies uh, they can provide. Uh, and they send it to the local distributor and local distributor then submit them online and uh, you know uh, wait for the registration to be completed the major thing is that which most of the american products should have is that they should have uh, mentioned on the label country of origin batch number manufacturing and expiry dates this is okay. very very you know basic actually okay so yeah that's a lot different from my experience with China. China's much different. So uh, we're talking about getting approval within some, some months, weeks and months, yeah. not, not years like in, in China. But um, also in China, there's a, for their registration process, there's a potency, you know, restriction. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of foreign companies, they want to take, let's say a multivitamin. Uh, yeah. They have a, they have a really comprehensive multivitamin that you have to take maybe three or four pills a day and has some mm -hmm. really good levels of different you know, B vitamins and all this stuff. Typically, those are too strong for China and you have to reformulate them. Um, mm, you just yeah. mentioned like vitamin C 1500. So vitamin C in the North American market, it's very common to see 500 milligram tablets or capsules or even a thousand milligram capsule tablets. Those are, yeah. those are fine to go through. Yes, yes, those are fine to go through. Okay, so it doesn't seem like uh, there's as many restrictions about companies having to reformulate for the market. No, no, no. That's very okay. easy. And uh, all the vitamin C 1000 milligram is very easily available in the market over here from various brands. All right, now is there any parts of the industry that, that, the, that these individual countries or the region really pays closer attention to? like? something that's just strictly botanical it's got like eight different herbal ingredients mm -hmm. or eight eight different extracts in it if it's sold in the u.s or a european market it's mm -hmm. you can you can say that it's probably going to be okay for that region too or is it a little bit you know kind of hit or miss with those type of products uh there are many products which are or many ingredients uh, are banned in the region as such um so uh, those those products we can't import it over here um so one of the major product um, i don't remember the ingredient which is very much common in us these days um that's like you know banned over here in the region um that that we can't import it um so there are list of the ingredients um, or or the products which we can't you know import over here but uh, most of the products which are like you know in in common usage uh, like you know vitamin a b c d e k you know, these are pretty much available. Okay, how about, how about like amino acids? Oh, yeah, yeah. Amino acids are very much available. Sports nutrition, uh, all the major brands are available. Uh, they go through the very simple registration uh, for two months or three months maximum, and uh, you get the product approval done, um, and you can start the import. Okay, so um, obviously there's lots of, you know, unanswered questions when you're talking about regulatory it's not a, it's not a very simple process but i think we've got yeah. the good gist of you know what's involved um yeah let's, let's wrap this up at the end here just if you could just go through uh quickly go through the documents required and we'll while you're doing that we'll get some uh, screenshots up there just to you know show what those documents are mm -hmm. um so if you see about the company registration, um, there is uh, one document which is called application form. So application form is issued by uh, all the regulatory bodies. Um, so the manufacturer has to fill those application forms um, and attach all the necessary documents with that. Um, the second document is about the distribution agreement. So that, that's a one page letter, agency appointment letter that you know, uh, this manufacturer appoints uh, this local company as a distributor in this territory. Um, then manufacturing site relationship letter. That is again like, you know, if you have a third party uh, manufacturer, you need to form a relationship letter with that. Uh, manufacturing license. That's again, I think, you know, issued from the, you know, uh, state board or, or any government body in the US uh, for that particular uh, manufacturing site to manufacture tablet capsules or all those things, powders. Uh, GMP is again, you know, uh, issued by the, you know, uh, regulatory bodies in US, uh, good manufacturing practice. 
um, site master file. Uh, again, I think all the manufacturing sites, they usually have their site master file, which needs to be shared. Let me, um, let me just throw, then, let me, I'm sorry, let me just interrupt you quickly. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're in terms of the US market, uh, you mm -hmm. know, they have the CGMP, which is a, you know, regulation that needs to be followed. And it's, uh, you know, yeah. it's a US FDA regulation, but the US FDA does not give out um, CGMP certifications like some countries do. So most countries or most companies, I should say in the US, um, yeah. you know, they, they have to individually follow the law and make sure they're following law. And then a lot of them will go out and get a third party uh, certificate, yes. like, like from NSF or some of these other yes. companies. Uh, so are those accepted? Because NSF yes, is yes. not the US government, but they'll accept those kind of? Oh, oh yes, yes. Okay. Those are accepted over here, very good. All right, I just thought that was a good point to, to point out. So I can mm -hmm. go ahead and I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then, you know, list of the products which company is uh, manufacturing or selling it. Uh, and a brief company profile, which is maybe like, you know, it's there on their website mostly that this mm -hmm. is the company and all those stuff. So there are a few documents, as I told earlier, is that uh, needs to be legalized and uh, it should be like, you know, from the, uh, you know, local chamber of commerce in US or um, embassy uh, over there and uh, needs to be like, you know, submit in originals, those documents. Okay, it doesn't sound too complex. And um, again, I, I'm just bringing some knowledge in from the China market, but there's been, there's been times where uh, China yeah. might requ require a document that, that the US or Europe or Australia, they don't have that kind of document and they kind of get stuck in the quagmire mm -hmm. of regulatory, like, well, how do we get this document? Do we just have to make it up? You know, um, it, it's, uh, it doesn't seem like this region has any of those kind of surprises? Uh, no, no. Uh, I feel like, you know, I have worked with so many, import, you know, um, companies mm -hmm. as an importer also. Um, and, you know, attending all the various uh, expos, Expo West and Expo East. So I have dealt with all the US companies um, and, you know, uh, got those, got them to like, you know, educate about the, these registration documents mm -hmm. and how they look like sample documents and all those stuff. Uh, and it's 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 been a smooth ride, you know. Uh, okay. It is not not so difficult, yeah. Not rocket science, as they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and and finally, let's just touch on it again before we sign off. Here is, um, you mentioned it it could take you know as little as two months to get a registration. Yes. And yeah. the, so, we're, what's the worst case scenario for a very complicated form? So maybe six months to a year, I think you said. Yeah, six months to a year. That's a federal registration. Usually it takes. Uh, now it varies from different countries. Uh, maybe like, you know, a country like UAE, it may take less time. Uh, in other countries, it may take more time. Uh, but again, you can take this kind of a, you know, time period for the registration. And then uh, on the low end, it's, it's, you mentioned it's like $100. Yeah, the fees is approximately $100 per product. The company registration may be like a thousand dollars, but all the cost, uh, whatever the regulatory cost comes in, uh, most of the cost is borne by the local distributor, or there is an arrangement between the local distributor and the company uh, mm -hmm. to, to share the cost. You know. Yeah, but these are these are going to be situations where you're doing an exclusive, you know, arrangement with a distributor. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Okay, so what is the worst case? Like, what what would be like the really high end uh, in terms of output of cash for registering a product? Um, it can be like uh, three thousand dollars or something. Okay. That can be for per per product or something. Wow. Uh, otherwise, not more than that actually. Okay, well that's definitely more reasonable than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, okay, well, that's, I think, a great, uh, great insights there. Thanks again. Um, let's, we'll sign off here and uh, stay tuned for the third installment where we'll, we'll talk and discuss a little bit more about, you know, the distribution channels and retail and kind of e-commerce environment of, of the region. Well, thanks again. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. See you soon. See you.
Thank you for tuning in to HPA Global Insights. Please like, subscribe, and share with your colleagues. Any questions or suggestions, email us at info at uschinahpa.org. This channel is operated by U.S. China Health Products Association, which is a nonprofit organization. Please consider joining the association and supporting its global endeavors. Your support is very much appreciated. Until next time, take care.